Hi there, in this video, I'll be walking you through how to set up vTest and React testing library in an existing Next.js repository. We are going to walk through setting up configuration for things such as absolute parts, importing SVGs as React components, being able to support a global state with context, and of course, being able to check out your test coverage in the terminal and in the browser. My name is Aremu Smog and welcome to Webos YouTube channel. If it's your first time on the channel, kindly subscribe, please like, share, and of course, drop your comments in the comment section. Let's get into it. Like I mentioned in the intro, we are going to be setting up an existing Next.js repository. So I've got a project here that is untested and we are going to be using this for our setup. So the first thing you want to do is install a couple of dev dependencies. So we have Vitez, Vitez.js plugin, React, JS DOM, and React testing library, and testing library React. So I'm just going to copy these, come over here and install. It's going to take a couple of sec for this to be installed. Once your dependencies are installed, the next thing you want to do is create a vtest config file. So I'm going to come over here and create a vtest.config.ts. If you are using JavaScript, please use .js instead. Then I'm going to come over here and import define config from vtest slash config. Then I'm going to come over here and simply export default define config. Then it's going to accept a bunch of things. So the first thing I want to pass is a plugin for React. Then I'm just going to come over here, React, then import React from at vtest.js slash plugin React. Then I'm going to pass React into this. Then up next, the next thing we want to do is set up the test environment. I'm just going to come over here and say test environment should be JS done. Good. And we have our basic setup. However, in order to be able to run the test, we need to add a new command to our package.json. So I'm just going to come over here and say test should be vtest. So if I come to the terminal and I run yarn test, this should run our test. And of course, there's no test, so I expect an error. So it says no test files found existing with code one. That's a sign of good progress. So I'm going to create a new test file by coming into the components folder, look for the button components, and I'm going to create a button.tests.css file. Right. Then I'm going to come over here and import describe and tests from vtest. Then I'm also going to, this should be describe. Then I'm going to import render from at testing library react or react testing library. Good. So I can then come over here and simply say describe button. Then of course this accepts a method. Then I'm going to say tests and say renders button. And this in fact is going to be the beginning of our problems, but yeah. <laughs> We're going to figure it out. So for now, okay, let me render the button. Uh, let's just go ahead and render the button. Then I need to import button from button. Import button from button. Uh, so I need to do save that all. And let's run yarn test just as a sample component. Then run yarn test. And in fact, this is going to throw an error. And I know what the error is. And we are going to resolve that very soon. So it says, Fail to resolve import svgs loader.svg from component button slash buttons.tsx. It says, does this file exist? The reason for this error is because we are importing. So if I open up button.tsx, you will see that over here, we are importing an svg using svgs comma loader.svg. And this is an absolute path, not a relative path. So vtest or react testing library is not able to find this file. This is in fact a very popular problem with vtest. If you check out the vtest docs, you will see that this is documented under common errors. And all you have to do is install vtest config path as a dev dependency and add it to your vtest.config.ts plugins. So I'm going to come over here, then open another session here just to yarn add dash d paste this guy and save it up upon successful installation all you have to do is just come over here just copy this line yeah paste it and simply add ts config parts ts config 
config path to your plugins. So save it up, then come over here and let's check what the problem is right now. So all we have to do is just run yarn test again and I expect the error to change by now to something else. Okay, so now the problem has changed from whether the file exists or not because we've resolved the issue with the absolute path. Then it says invalid character error svg is loader.svg. And the reason for this is because if you can see over here, we are importing the SVG as a React component. And of course, we are using it down here. In order to resolve that problem, we are going to use another Vtest plugin known as React Magical SVG. In fact, this is the repository. And I should also mention that I'm going to link every resource that is used in the course of this video in the comments so you could check them out for yourself so all i have to do is just come over here and do yarn add vite plugin svg come over here do that okay once the magical svg plugin is installed i have to come back to vtestconfig.cs then import magical svg from vite plugin magical svg then i'm going to pass it to the plugins then this is going to accept a param and i'm just going to set the target to be react save it up and i'm going to stop the tests and run the test again so if i come over here and run yarn test i expect that my test should now pass and you can see the test now passes now let's talk about handling global states with context so i've got a newsletter component here that uses um, a context known as the subscribers context. You can see we have a use subscribers context, right? So I'm going to create a test file for the newsletter component, newsletter.test.csx. And as usual, I'm just going to import describe and tests from vtests, from vtests. And of course, I'm going to import render from testing library slash react then i can come over here and write a describe and i'm just going to say newsletter come over here and tests renders newsletter and i'm just gonna come over here and say render newsletter save it up and i expect that the newsletter.csx should throw an error now test.csx rather so now we have an error. It says use subscribers context must be a child of subscribers context. Very good. So um, there are two ways that you can solve this. The easiest one that you might guess is just to simply wrap the newsletter component in the subscribers context. So if you come over here and say subscribers context provider, bring your newsletter component and paste it in here, that's going to work fine. Your test will now begin to pass or the components will now be rendered. So we have renders newsletter component. So that's the first approach. Approach. The second approach is to just pass a wrapper into this. So the render accepts two parameters. Uh, the first thing is the UI or the components that you want to render, which is usually like a React node. And the next thing is a bunch of options. So inside of the options, you can just come over here and say wrapper and say subscribers, subscribers, context provider, save it up, and uh, that should now pass. I think that the major difference between uh, the two, whether you are wrapping the entire component in the subscriber context or you are passing it as a wrapper is if you have some values that you want to pass to the provider then it makes sense to just wrap it at that global level however if it's just a context such as this where you're not passing any any value to the wrapper then it might just make sense to just pass this it looks a bit clean now that solves the problem however imagine that you have a bunch of components or a bunch of pages that are using this same sub subscribers context provider Every single time you need to render those elements, then you need to start passing wrapper, subscribers, context provider, dry, do not repeat yourself is one of the popular paradigms of programming. So it's actually possible for you to create a custom renderer or a custom render that is going to automatically wrap your component in the global state or the global providers that you use. And that's exactly what we are going to do next. So I'm going to come over to my utils folder. So let me just collapse these guys and look for my utils folder. I'm going to create a tests utils.csx, right? Then uh, I'm just going to come over here and say, import uh, render from at testing library react right then i'm going to create a just a mini component for all my providers so i'm going to come over here and say all providers equals this is going to accept children 
I'm going to simply return. The only provider we have, of course, is the subscriber's context provider, right? Uh, so that's the only thing I'm going to be wrapping in here. And I'll just pass children. If you have more providers that you would like to pass in here, you can just nest them and that will work fine. So the next thing you want to do, of course, is to create your custom render. I'm going to come over here and create custom render equals. So this is going to accept two things, the UI, which is the element that you want to render and uh, the options that you want to pass to that render. Then I'm just going to come over here and say render the UI and for our options, the first thing we are going to pass. So just, just like we did over here in the newsletter test component or test file, we passed the wrapper right so i'm just going to come over here i'm just going to come over here and say wrapper equals all providers right and of course in this case now it's very possible for you to pass your values before they get into here which is most likely like mock values and all of that right so you have your wrapper then the next thing of course is to spread the other options which also even means that you can still override this wrapper uh internally so options right uh so once you have that save it up uh the next thing you want to do is just export everything that is in testing library slash react slash react then we want to override remember that testing library slash react comes with its own render function right so we want to override that we are just going to say export custom render as render to see if this is working all we have to do is just come over to the newsletter component and instead of importing our render from testing library slash react we are going to import it from from utils slash test utils and i'm going to remove this wrapper because it is now wrapped at that high level save it up and let's see if the test C passes correctly and it still renders correctly now of course there is a little line here typescript that is showing that oh there is an additional argument that i need to pass in here and the way to resolve that is just to come over to test utils first make sure that so options is optional options is optional for the ui the ui should be a react node so i'm just going to do react so let me import react react node right then the options is going to be render options but i'm going to omit the wrapper because we're already passing that here and if you want it you can add it as well so i'm just going to come over here to render options if you are not uh, using typescript please feel free to skip this part <laughs> this is none of your concern really uh then i'm just going to do wrapper wrapper and yeah then i'm going to import render options render options from this guy and that should do it so come back here and the red lines from typescript should be gone because this is a project that was bootstrapped without testing from the beginning one of the things that makes sense to do is to check out your test coverage as you are writing tests inside of this code base or repository so in order to check your test coverage all you have to do is just come over here and say yarn test dash dash coverage and press enter and it's going to throw not an error just a warning it says you need a dependency so just press y and it's going to install the dependency that you need for your test coverage so once the test coverage dependency is installed all you have to do is just come over here and run yarn test dash dash coverage again and it's going to come up with the report of your code basis test coverage so yeah of course this report shows up in the terminal and while of course you can look through this uh i found it more helpful to look at things in the browser and in order to do that all you have to do is just come over here and do test coverage dash dash ui and press enter and of course this is going to require another dependency just press y and that is going to get installed as well so if i run this again you can see it says that i have two test files the two of them pass and this is the number of test files that i have to see the test coverage just come over here and click on coverage and you are going to be able to visually this is i think that this is much more helpful than um just looking at things in the terminal right so you can click on any of these files and come or folders and you are going to be able to dig deep see where exactly things have gone wrong and so on and so forth yeah that's pretty much it on how to set up a uh, test coverage and be able to view it in the ui of course you can add this command to your package.json so you can just come over here and say uh, vtests and say um, tests coverage and do vtests dash dash coverage right and if you want the ui you can come over here and say test coverage ui and say vtests just come over here and say vtests uh coverage dash dash ui and um 
if I'm, I'm just going to cancel that out, canceling test, then I'm just going to come over here and say yarn tests coverage UI. And that's going to make life super easy for you. And it's going to do exactly the same thing. So yeah, it's reloading now and you are done. If you made it to the end of this video and you found this video helpful, please subscribe as a form of support to the channel. Like as well so that the algorithm can recommend this video to other devs such as you. Drop a comment in the comment section on what you think would have been better or if you have other videos that you would like me to make. Cheers and don't forget to build like a boss.